Hello everyone, Xbox7752 here, and uh, I am here to do my prediction video for a matchup that I am very fond of, and I'm hoping that they do this very well, is Lawrence of Arabia and Teddy Roosevelt. So, let's get started. All right, we are back. Yes, back again. Always back. Yeah, weird, huh? <laughs> God, I have to pick up an idea for that. Anyway, back to the prediction. Let's get this started off in long-range weapons with Theodore Roosevelt's Gatling gun versus uh, Lawrence of Arabia's Vickers machine gun. Yes. Now, both of these weapons are very similar. and No, they're not similar at all. They're very different. Uh, the... Gatling gun, what it is, it's almost like 10 bolt action rifles. What you do is you put a clip, a magazine clip at the top, and you crank out the bullets one by one by one. But it's, it gets up to 900 miles per hour if you have a fast enough, if you have a guy that's going fast enough. The thing about it, that just that cranky motion is just going to get eventually tiring and tiring and tiring. Well, the Vickers, what it would do was, it would, it, you pro, it, you'd get it down, and all you had to do is hold the trigger and aim. So, they're very different. Also, the Vickers is a bit more maneuverable. You pick it up, with, while the uh, Gatling gun, it was, ba it, 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 you had a, it had, um, it was kind of like a cannon, in a way, where it was based, and you had to wheel it, uh, on this wagon-ish kind of thing. I don't know what the heck they're called, but, um, see in the picture, they, you have, you'd have to pick it up and wheel it down. While the Vickers you could just pick up. Sure, it's heavy, but you at least can just pick it up instead of having to wheel it down. So, um, the Vickers, uh, now, now a big thing about this is jamming. And I don't know about jamming about either of these, either of these but if you think about it, the Vickers, when Lawrence used it, was used in Arabia, obviously. And so what they would do is, um... All the sand, like if you think about it, a bunch of sand would just pick up, like all the sand all over. So you would be shooting at. It. So if sand got in that, I doubt it would jam, cause that they obviously had success with it. So I don't think the sand bothered it, but I don't know about like dirt and stuff. But if you think about it, if sand doesn't bother it, then a lot of stuff won't, you know. Uh, I don't know about the Gatling gun. I do think though, if you crank it a little bit too fast, it might jam, cause it's not used to going that fast. But uh, I, I, see, I see this as an easy, easy edge. It's the, I, go to, I give it to the Vickers uh, because all you have to do is aim and shoot. While the uh, Gatling gun, you have to crank and crank and crank and crank. You're eventually going to get tired and you have to shake out your hand. That gives you a split second where you can get killed. So that's not worth it. Um, so the Vickers gets the edge once again. Um, in uh, Let's go to medium range weapons where we have... The Springfield versus the Lee Enfield Mark III. Now, to me, I don't even have to talk about this one. All right. Uh, if you ever watch the show Lock and Load with Arlie Army, it's on the History Channel. They actually did this matchup. They had Arlie Army had the Springfield. It was a World War II matchup because they were both used in World War II. I was like, wait a minute, is it a different model? No, same exact model, nothing different. And this. Uh, British marksman use the Lee Enfield. Now the Lee Enfield is 10 rounds and it also is a box magazine to my knowledge. And what you do is all you have to, it's like a magazine. You take it out put it back in. Now the Springfield has 5 rounds. And you have to take 5 rounds and put it through the top and then fire. So that's harder to reload than a box magazine. Then also the Lee Enfield it has a smoother uh, they're both bolt action. It has a smoother bolt action. It's, I don't know what the heck they call it. Um, it's smoother, so you can go quicker. The uh, Springfield isn't as smooth, so it takes a little while to bring it back and fix it. The Enfield just go right there, done. It didn't require a lot of strength to, uh, not a lot of, a lot of power to do that quick motion. So, they're both bolt action, and the Springfield didn't got well, lost by they did uh, 20 plates, lost by 20, oh, lost by seven plates. 
Now, I'm probably thinking, well, Arlie Ermey isn't a special marksman like they used to have. Well, he was actually in war, and he's not. he might not have been the greatest soldier or anything like that, but if you think about it, it's the weapon. The weapon's going to take longer to reload, it's not as smooth with the bolt action, and it has 5 rounds compared to 10 rounds. The Lee Enfield is much more accurate as well, okay? And they're not using scopes, so don't even be like, oh, well, they might use it. No, they're not using scopes, okay? All right, so Lee Enfield gets the edge. I don't even have to think about it. I know the Lee Enfield's going to win. And if Delhi's where it picks the Springfield, then they're obviously very stupid, okay? I almost back up Delhi's War in almost every single thing, but if they pick Springfield, this has already been tested. It's already been proven. If they pick the Springfield, then they're stupid. They There's something wrong with them. It's the Lee Enfield, smoother bore, 10 rounds, detachable box magazine, and it's also 10, I'd say 10 rounds, more accurate, box magazine, smoother bolt action, and more accurate. I, I don't know how many times I've said more accurate, but it is more accurate, okay? So if Lee Enfield doesn't get the edge, then they're stupid. So I give my edge to Lee Enfield because I'm not stupid. If Delish were to pick Springfield, then they're really stupid, okay? So yeah, Edge Spring, uh, Enfield. Um, <laughs> I went overboard over there. But um, now let's go back to calm, casual, Matt. Uh, in short-range weapons, we have Teddy Roosevelt's Bowie Knife versus Lawrence of Arabia's Jambia. I don't know. Jambia, I'm going to say, is how you pronounce it. Well, both of these are very similar, but we have seen in the past that the Bowie Knife can be thrown, if possible. So, I'm going to give my edge to the Bowie Knife already. They're both very similar. They're both about the same length, I have to say. But just because of the fact that you can throw the Bowie Knife, I think it's going to be a bit more lethal. Otherwise, I think it was a draw, but if but since you can throw the Bowie Knife, I don't know if you can throw the Jambaya. So, just because of the fact that you could throw it, I'm going to give the edge to the Bowie Knife. Alright, now to battle tactics. Now, I'm not big with these people's battles, but I did see the 15-minute clip, which I will have in the description. And from what I could tell, Teddy Roosevelt was kind of like Joan of Arc's strategy, where she, he would just go into battle. Like, not even think about just rush. So he'd, like, rush the Spanish in Cuba and just took them out. Now, what Lawrence did, since he knew that they were fighting the Ottoman Empire, one of the largest empires in history... One of the largest, not the largest. So don't be like, oh, you see that he was the largest. No, shut up, okay? I hate you haters. Anyway, um, so it was one of the largest, and it controlled Arabia for a very long period of time. And during World War II, they they lost control of it. The Ottoman Empire was done. So we, and then um, <coughs> excuse me. And what Lawrence did was he used hit and run tactics. So he when he would go to a um like a camp or something, attack them, then rush into the desert and show up a hundred miles later, and because they would just hit and run, they would just attack and then move, stick and move, you know. So because M I think it's M I don't know what the hell the name is, the word is, but because Teddy Roosevelt would just go in without even like thinking, just just go for set. Then I have to give the edge to Lawrence because he actually would strategize, in my opinion. I don't know. All right. So that's probably already obvious, but you're probably thinking, who do I think will win? Lawrence of Arabia versus Theodore Roosevelt. And I choose Lawrence of Arabia. And there's a lot of reasons. He has better weapons. He's a smarter human being. And let's not forget, he is almost the perfect specimen of health. He, they, they said he could run a mile in under five minutes. He ate great. He didn't smoke. He didn't drink. He... Sorry, I got a text. He has perfect weight. He, he, he's about perfect size. He's only 29 years old. And he's going to battle like a... Like, he's... he's Well, perfect specimen of health. He... You know, he's fast. He's also strong. He spoke seven languages. He's very intellectual. So... I definitely have to give my edge to Lawrence. He's going to win because he is a smarter human being. 
and he's the faster one, and he's also and he just has better weapons as well. He is just this is almost like if they pick the, if Teddy wins, I will honestly be shocked because I give respect to Teddy. What he did was very amazing as well. However, what Lawrence of Arabia did far surpasses anything that I think. He, in my opinion, is the perfect warrior. And if he loses, I will be very shocked. Because he is the perfect warrior, in my, my opinion. Okay? He's just, he's stacked. He's just the perfect warrior. Okay? He's smart. He, I've said it too many times, but he's smart. He's fast. And he also has better weapons. Okay? He's the perfect warrior. And I think he will win this battle. And if he doesn't, as I said, I will be very, very shocked. Okay? So, I hope you guys like this video. Uh, oh, I forgot. I'm going to give my review of Deadliest Warrior Legends, Joan of Arc DLC, right now. Very quick. Joan of Arc's great character. Um, she she seems a little bit overpowered. Her weapons are really cool. Uh, I like her other armor. And... Uh, the the, uh, the church is really cool too, uh, because when, you, when they talk, they actually can hear an echo. It probably didn't take long to do that, but it's actually pretty cool. Mac, don't even play Mac. You can only use him as bat, and when you play a battle, he's useless. Don't even attempt to play as him. You get a random character, and if you get Joan of Arc's weapons, that'd be hysterical because he talks like them. It'd be like, I was fun for this. It'll be hysterical. Uh, but um, I hate Mac. He's stupid. But it's almost like they threw him in for free. Because I think a character, a brand new character in any game, is at least 160. And, for especially an arcade game. And another character would be 160. But, since they gave another arena, that's around 240. So it should be 240, which should be... It. So they kind of like threw Mac in for free, just for the hell of it. So, definitely get it. It's definitely worth it. Joan of Arc is a great character. And you will definitely like it. Um, alright, so, uh, let's see. Oh, and, uh, I didn't get a, uh, joke weapon. I know it's the broom. I have to get it. I'm working on it as we speak. Uh, but yeah, let's see. Leaf Station 4 in the description. Blue Team TV in the description. Uh, 15 Minute, uh, Teddy Roosevelt versus Lawrence of Raven in the description. I'm sorry that my friend texted me. Uh, but I, I was towards the end of the video. I'm not stopping. And that's the thing. I can't pause. Because I have a crappy sound recording system. Alright, I'm speaking too long. Hope you guys like this video. I will see you guys uh, uh, Wednesday with my aftermath with Andrew. Uh, hope you guys stay deadly. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Okay, bye.